So the first thing we're going to do is take a proportion of the flour, mix it with the water, the yeast and the yoghurt and make what's called a sponge or a flying starter or commonly known as a poolish. Now we've mixed a proportion of the flour, yoghurt, water and yeast together. We're going to leave this in a warm place just to allow it to ferment slightly. Probably raise about a third. This is a brown bread recipe which we call multi-seed. There's two extra ingredients in here. We just add a lovely sweetness to the bread which are roasted pumpkin and roasted onions. Now as you can see we've done the sponge, poolish or flying starter. This is ready to put into the bread now. And then the finishing of the seeds and the salt. The salt and the seeds go in at the end for the last two minutes of mixing. This is a traditional mixing machine which we're making bread on. It has a hook attachment. There are three attachments for this machine, a paddle, a whisk and a hook. The paddle is for pastry, the whisk is for whisking and the dough hook is for obviously doughs. The machine's on a slow speed at the moment. You don't want to generate too much heat into the dough mix because it'll start to overproof before it comes out of the bowl. So I'm going to leave this on the machine now for about six to seven minutes. I'm going to feel the dough to see whether it's right, then we'll add the seeds and then the salt. Now the brown bread's been on the machine for about eight to nine minutes. The seeds have been added, as is the salt. We're going to cover this with a damp cloth and leave it to ferment up to about two-thirds of its original mass. This is called bulk fermentation, which is the first stage of the fermentation process. Now the brown bread's bulk fermented. I'm going to take it out of the bowl and knock out and expel all the air. If the air is not expelled fully, it will rise un unevenly on second proof or first proving. feels nice and soft, not too sticky, quite silky to the touch. At this point, you can bulk ferment again, but because we did the flying sponge, for me this recipe doesn't need that second bulk fermentation. So now it's, if you want loaves, cut the loaves and scale it into rolls. The loaves, between 500 and 550, for the rolls, 30 grams to 50 grams, depending on what size you're looking for in your restaurant. Now I'm going to shape the dough for loaves. First thing is to expel any excess air. Roll in what we call a slipper shape. And it's almost rolling it in on itself. Creating a nice tight roll, as you can see. Turn it over and the join on the two sides, just pinch into the edges. That can be left out with a damp cloth or some cling film over the top just to prove in the kitchen or it can be put into the prover between 32 and 34 degrees. For me, this recipe proves well. Once it's risen by two, which is double this size, bake in a hot oven at 250 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes. Now the bread's been in the prover, it's ready to bake. Just before it goes into the oven, it's going to spray it with a little bit of water. This is going to help develop a nice crispy crust, not too much, just enough to wet the top. Dust it with some flour. And this is the point where you can perhaps put more poppy seeds on or a different seed. Now for the cut. This is the most important part about the shape of the bread and also when it's baking in the oven, if you cut too deep, all the gas will escape, the bread will collapse. So at a slight angle, using a serrated knife, like so. This gives it a nice presentation but also adds texture because once it starts to open up and prove, that's going to bake, be baked a little bit harder, a little bit crisper, so it's going to afford a nice crispy crumb. When this goes into the oven, we're going to put some water in there. This is called steam injection or water charging the oven. What that will do is it will create a huge amount of steam but in a hot oven. That gives 
Big lift helps create a better crust on the outside. Now we've removed the bread from the oven. It sits on a cooling wire. This prevents the base from steaming, leaving a nice crusty base. Nice selection of rolls at the front there. Cottage roll, parve, knot and traditional roll. Selection of tin loaves. Bloomer or slipper loaf. And here we've got the white, which is like a pan rustique. Lacks shape, but great density of flavour.